this is a really fun video. It's kind of long. So grab a cup of coffee or a glass of wine and settle in because this is my story of becoming an artist and it is not at all what you think it's going to be. So have a listen. There's only one big takeaway you need to take away from this, this ridiculous thing I'm gonna show you right now, which is that like, you have to know, trust me, and I know from personal experience, and I'm gonna show you that right now, that really, truly, 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 anyone can become an awesome artist, like period. But those are just words, right? It's like, it's different when you like feel it and you can see it. So I'm gonna show you some things so you can actually maybe even believe it. But it really true, it really, really is true that anyone can become an awesome artist. So who, literally, who here feels intimidated looking at people's artworks? I do. Every time I see Dar Darlene Hannah's work, I'm like, oh my God, she is so good. So I still feel this way. All right, so there's definitely me. <laughs> so yes, I'm getting some yes yous. Uh, I do in the chat. I know, I think it's really, <laughs> I think it's super duper I know me. I know. How do you not be like that? You're only if you're if you don't feel a little bit intimidated sometimes. I'm not even sure that you're human, but I'm glad because it means you're feeling very confident, which is a good thing. Okay, so a lot of people are saying yes, yes, I do. I know, right? Okay, we're not done though. All right, where are my late bloomers? <laughs> All right, who here is just starting out and is like in their 50s or 60s or 70s or 80s? Where are my, <laughs> I know, I'm not afraid to look like a super dork. I'm really not afraid. Yay, look at all these late bloomers, 60s, 55, 58. Yo, I love it, I love it. 67, yes. And the reason I'm asking this question is because you, I want you guys to look at, at the chat and realize you are not alone. <laughs> Like, that's why I'm asking this. And I know you're not alone, but maybe you don't know you're not alone. So yeah, 72, 64, 62. Yeah, and I didn't, 69, yikes. And yes, thank you. All right, look at all these. Look at all these, 56, 61, 48. You're like a baby. I'm 47. Um, Because I think almost all my, all members, uh, most of our members are, see these ages? So you're not alone. That was my whole purpose for this was to really show you guys. So who feels like they might be too old? Not to be a, do a good job, but is anyone feeling, like does anyone have feels about that? Because I know when I was starting, I was like kind of embarrassed. So I got my, I didn't start doing anything till I was um, really in my thirties and I was kind of embarrassed. Like I didn't, I wasn't like, I spend my days drawing. Like I didn't really even want anybody to know. It was so random and weird to like do art because I'd never done any art before. But if there's anyone who's sitting here who is, there's a lot of lurkers who are not going to be typing in the chat who are like, yeah, I feel silly for being here. So again, I want you to know that you're not alone. Yeah. Oh, so I love this so much right here. Yes. Who knew I could draw? I wish I had started sooner. Yes. Right. I know. And also I hope this encourages people who have been like thinking about starting that haven't to actually encourage them to go ahead and dive in right? Because I'm with you guys. I'm like, oh my God. And I've said that all the time, especially to my kids. Like, I wish I had known the art because my kids are like college age and going off to college. And I'm like, I wish I had known my passion for art when I was their age because I would have started, but I didn't, I didn't do anything. We'll get into that in a second. Um, and then who thinks it might just like take a long time to get there. Maybe you're like, yeah, I'm not, I'm 80. I'm just starting. I got this. But at the, in the back of your head, you're like, oh God, though, how long is this going to take? Like how many bad drawings do I have to do before I actually get a good one? Because <laughs> that's another thing that I hear. Because I think that also is a thing where you're like, oof, this is going to maybe like probably, yeah, this one said, yep, probably a long time. And then the last one, look at this poor lady. Like, is she not done or what? She's like, this is just too hard. Because I just want to make sure I am reaching everyone who's having any of these thoughts, because I'm hoping this will help, like, put you into a positive mindset so that you can go forward and just maybe turn that your own frown upside down. Because, and, um, oh, you do. Okay. So, Thank you for being honest and open. You don't even have to say anything. You could just sit there. So I appreciate that, Dina. Yeah, it is hard. It can be hard, right? Oh, Valerie. Valerie. 
Valerie, you do such great work. Don't say that. Oh no. Okay. Well, don't, um, I am sorry that you're feeling this way, but I really hope that what I'm about to share with you will help you realize that you really can do it. All right. So those are the things I wanted to kind of address. So you are not alone. And that is super normal. When I started wrapping my head around, like what, what, I think that I'm an awesome artist. Like, how do I, how did I get here? I I, I kind of had to start with like when when I was like little or like just in general, like according to like society's standards, right? Because there's this like this preconceived notion about like what what makes an awesome artist awesome. Um, I think like universally, people are like, well, you know, the greats like. If you think of any like like Picasso and Monet and Van Gogh, like what comes to my mind and maybe you think differently is that like I always just assume that people are born with their talent. Right. Like they're these all these professional artists who are the greats, like they're born with it. That's what I used to think. Anyways, I really, really thought that. Did you guys used to think so, too? I definitely thought so. Um, I also, when I think of like, what is, you know, the people that are the most accomplished and professional and oh, all the greats are like, they have this like all encompassing like passion and like, it's their life. And like, that's all they talk about. And that's all they do. And they like some, a lot of them don't have families or children because they're like, so uni focused and that doesn't matter or not matter, whatever, just like an observation. And that's like in my head, what I think about like a, like a big, great professional artist is like, that's just their life. They eat, sleep and drink art. And that's all they do. <laughs> and no, this is just me again, but like, um, I also, I just have this perception in my head of like, like a lot of times I'll go to a museum and I'll be like, personally, like, I, I don't understand why that's good, but clearly everyone else does or they wouldn't be in this museum. Like there's something about them. Right. And I don't understand like any of it, but they're here. So they must be amazing. And like other people all say that they're amazing. And so that's why they're here. So those are really like the three ingredients in, in my head that like, okay, that must be what you need to do and be to be an amazing artist. Here's our recap. I think that you have to be worn with talent. You have to have just all encompassing passion and all the time, all the time, just being in your craft and perfecting it and throwing paint around and doing all those things. And you have to be like wowing the socks off of anyone in order for you to fall into the awesome artist category. Um, okay. So this is, was my thought process. I was like, to be like a full on awesome artist, you had to have 100% passion and you had to be born with 100% talent. Boom. It's as simple as that. Um, and then here is just, I don't know. I got really carried away with graphics as you can see, but always creating in my head. This is what I'm picturing with people. Like when I think of Frida, you know, Kahlo and, uh, Georgia O'Keeffe and all these artists, I was like, you know, they're, they're drawing and creating like out of the womb. And they're like, it's just this all encompassing thing. Again, this is sort of like the recipe in my head that I always imagined. And then I think sometimes, especially if you're new, I'm wondering like, God, I wonder if people make assumptions about me like that because I have all these books that I've published and I've been featured in all these magazines and I have all these YouTube channels and I run awesome art school. Like, are they thinking of that about me that like I was born with talent and I have all this time to, to devote to my craft and like I'm making this stuff that other people, is that is that like a thing? I don't even know. But I just literally, you have to know, and I'm going to show you in one second that I was not born with any talent. Okay. And here, why, why is that? Well, <laughs> I guess I'll show you my art in two seconds, but like, I actually, my background is, um, I didn't take art in high school. I didn't take art in college. I had absolute zero interest. I actually wanted to, um, be uh, an anthropologist and I studied primates uh, in college. <laughs> and I spent a summer in Africa. It was like one of the turning points of my uh, life. And I studied with Harvard at the, um, I studied pa uh, paleo paleoanthropology in Kenya. Um, 
And I've said, I say these words before, but I haven't ever like shown pictures too, to like really like make you understand that I was, did not grow up an artist. I was not a doodler in class. Like that pencil I'm holding never drew anything. Okay. That was just, I literally wanted to like be on safari and be in Africa and study monkeys. Okay. Like for reals. I, this is my honors thesis. This is one, this was literally, I still have it. I took this picture yesterday. I went up to my attic and I found it. Okay. I, my the honors thesis was on the behavioral analysis of sociosexual behaviors in bonobos. Um, I, I'm not joking. I did not want to be an artist. I, it was not on my radar anywhere, ever, 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 ever. I wanted to be Jane Goodall. I met her in college. It was like the most amazing moment of my life. Um, uh, this was my brain growing up. Okay. I didn't want to be an artist whatsoever. Um, and I just like, I know people make assumptions about me and I'm just here to tell you that they are not true. All right. So these are my actual, <laughs> my actual drawings. Um, this is from, I've shared this in the Facebook group. This is literally from my art journal, uh, my art journal. <laughs> this is from my journal that I kept while I was in Africa. I said, and you can see my writing, my note to myself is just in case I actually save this journal. So when I'm ancient, I can remember the day I returned from my first trip to Africa. Okay. So in, in the Facebook group, I'm like, don't you think if I could draw at that moment and I was making, creating this page so I would never forget don't you think if I ha if I could draw better, I would have? <laughs> like, I feel like, you know, you hear what I'm saying? Okay, and I'm I I asked my mom when I was um I was trying to like come up with the percentageness of talent that I was born with, and I and she, she agreed. I was like, I feel like it's ten percent. Like I feel like I've always had like a creative bone, but like maybe ten percent. She was like, Yeah, that's about that's about right. So um, this is my first face. I I actually see this. Um, I have to stop this. Oh, I won't. But this is the journal that this face is drawn in. I'll show you afterwards, but I still have it. This is not like, this is not made up. This is real. Um, and then look at her face. Look at this amazing, like, what the hell? What the hell is that? Okay. So this is where we're coming from. Um, I'm glad. Yes, you're very welcome. <laughs> I'm happy. But this is why, like, I think people just, you look at people who are good at what they do and you just like make your assume like, oh, already. Okay. If they're an awesome artist today, they were born with talent, right? They clearly like have spent their lives devote, devoted to this and all the things I'm trying. I'm literally living proof. Like at least for me, nope, nope, not at all. Okay. So that you can see in firsthand that I was not born with any talent. So uh, as far as like your life's passion and your time, um, <laughs> this is actually what I've been doing for the last almost 20 years. Has it been like perfecting my craft? No, I'm a mom. Okay. So, um, I had, th uh, three kids in four years and my life was a living hell. Mm. My favorite part about this picture <laughs> is my husband back here and this picture I originally posted in February 22nd. Oh my God. That's so weird. That was almost exactly, exactly. Um, what, however, to the date that however many years ago this was, this is, that was my husband. And this is my actual sister commenting here on the original post tw 12 years ago. Is that Sean in the background <laughs> rubbing his temples? I think he was going like this, like, Oh God. She was like, cause that's how I always feel. So she had three kids, um, also around the same age at the same time. So I was cracking up. Um, but like, this is actually what I was doing. This, this is what I was doing. I wasn't like making masterpieces. I wasn't like spending all day in my studio, honing my skills. Like I was, I was drowning. I was drowning in diapers. I was like a nap Nazi. Like I wouldn't go anywhere. My kids went to bed at six o'clock forever. Okay. There was screaming. I mean, there, it was a lot, it was a lot happening. Look, I mean, Billy is passed out with a basket on his head. Like it was mayhem all the time. Okay. <laughs> no, I know why wine is important. Oh, I know. So this is what I was doing. Okay. <laughs> and, um, however, I do have to say, this is actually a very recent picture. I'm still doing it. Okay. I'm still look down in laundry. I'm still like do the dishes and drowning in things every single night. Billy comes home every single day and takes off his shoes and dumps the socks in the middle of the doorway, like every single day and is 
feet are size 15. So his shoes are like this big clogging up the doorway. Like this doesn't stop. But I do have to say that my journey did start because of this. Like this is where my journey does just barely starts. Okay. So this is uh, mid 2000s. And I start creating for the first time for me be to escape all of this. Like I was drowning in diapers. Uh, my kids were screaming like, oh my God. And so when I had that sacred like 20 minutes <laughs> during when they all magically maybe fell asleep at the same time, one time a week, I discovered that like painting, like, holy cow, it was such the best stress relief in the entire world. Okay, so that was like my first wake up call. Like, oh, what is this now? What is this magical? So yes, wine is great, but I'm not about to drink wine at 2 p.m. But you know what I can do at 2 p.m.? I can like slap some paint on a canvas. And that was the first time like this is I did it because of this. I wasn't getting creative because I wanted to make anything. I got creative because I was dying and I was drowning to be perfectly honest. Also at this time, right before the birth of Max, my little Maxadoodle right here, we moved 700 miles away from our family. So we had absolutely no support system. That's kind of important to know too. So I was really struggling as a young mom. I was drowning and art like saved my ass basically, saved my mental state, but it just feels so random that I would be like painting in the middle of the day, especially because I had so much laundry to do, right? Somebody had like a diaper blowout and I had to go like, you know, clean the, the stupid sheets for the 80th time. And like, you know, all of you who are moms know. And if you're not a mom, you might also connect with this story with like, um, if you're a caretaker for a spouse or a loved one or a parent and like that same sense of like, caretaking or responsibilities is heavy. It's a heavy one. Or your job is really taxing. Like a vet who I'm going to share with you her work in a minute. She's a nurse. And like, I know for her, cause I've interviewed her before, like she does a nurse, a nursing is super stressful. And so art is such a great stress reliever for so many people. So I started art as a means of survival, not because I gave a shit about becoming an awesome artist. Okay. Just to be clear, that was not my goal. So, um, okay. So just to kind of reiterate, yes, it was, it was, it really was a matter of survival. And I still, that still is my motivation for working so hard today. It's because the soul fulfillment that I receive from just being in the throes of creation is amazing. And that's why I keep doing it. Um, and it's also <laughs> like, it's not over guys. Like Billy, this is Billy bear. He's only, Maggie is 70 pound dog. This he's a giant. He's been looking at colleges, but like we, we were just driving the other day. We got in a car accident together. Like he was driving. He still doesn't have his license. He actually goes for his test next week. Like this kind of stuff, all the, we're in the weeds still. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate. So it's like kind of like no matter where you are in your life, like there's always some sort of stress. This is sort of my current stress. The, this picture I took last week. These are current. This is what's happening right now. My oldest is in Vermont in college. And like there's still a lot. There's still a lot of drama. And there's still a lot of reasons why I need to create. And it's not to like make money selling my pictures. It's so that I can like take a deep breath and feel great and have a good day. So hopefully those quick slides show you that I was not born with talent. I had zero desire to be an artist. I had no time. I didn't have any passion. <laughs> and I don't think I was making anything that anyone thought was cool. I was just making stuff so that I like felt better because it made me feel good. It was like a drug and it was like a virtual glass of wine I could have at 2 p.m. This this is related to the like making uh, stuff others think is cool. And so this is basically like just an example of like, I don't, I still don't understand the art world to be perfectly transparent because I didn't, I don't have an education in art or art history. Like I go to museums and I'm like, I don't, I don't know what any of this means. Like I am so far removed from the actual art world because I don't care about it really. I just want to make awesome stuff and because it makes me feel good on the inside and I don't know what this means. And I honestly don't really care. <clears throat> Um, I also don't sell my art and that's why I don't people are like, how can we not sell your art? I'm like, cause that's not, that's not why I do it. I do it 
because it just makes me feel good. And I'm just going to only make things that make my heart happy. I do not care about the money. I could sell everything. I have freaking thousands of hoarded things and I, I just know why I do it. And so that's why I, the, yeah. So this was my old view, which we started with, right? Which is like to be an awesome artist or professional artist, you have to have like this, like time consuming passion and you have to be born with all of this talent. Okay. But like, I'm thinking here now and I'm like, okay, I have published all these books. Like I have this amazing art school that I love. Like maybe I am an awesome artist, but like there must be another way to get there because I am there and it wasn't through the ways I thought you had to get there. So like, let's unpack maybe that, like if it's not passion and time, what is, what is this? And if it's not talent, then like, what is that? Because I feel like, I feel like I am in that category, but like, what did I do to get there? And also the bottom line is if I can do it, you can do it too. So to recap, I don't do all, any of these things. And this is what I kind of figured out. Okay. So I think it's okay. If you want to become an awesome artist, if you can replace passion with just sheer like joy, just loving what you're doing, I think that's enough. And I think if you're not born with talent, guess what, guys? I think you can just learn the skills to that will equate to so you know what to do and you can make awesome art. And I think that that's okay. I think this is enough, which means like anybody can do it. Anybody can have joy when they're creating, right? And anyone can learn the skills that they need to become an awesome artist. So this is my point of the presentation. Like if I can do it, anyone can do it truly. Okay. So here's just me being a dork and loving graphics. You can have your joy. You're replacing your joy with the passion and you're replacing talent with skills. We can do that. It's like swimming. It seems crazy hard, but you can learn the skills and you can swim. <laughs> it's like anything. Okay. So here is like in my head, like where I kind of started with, we already talked about 10% skills. I really do think that like, that was my starting off point. What does that mean? Well, that means I have not, I have a lot. I have 90%. I got a lot of skills that I have to learn. This was me back in 2004. And I would say that I was probably at like the 70% joy mark because I think there's, there was what was keeping me from like filling my joy bucket from the get go was things like self doubt and fears, insecurities, the negative self talk. And a lot of you might, I know so many people and don't even, don't even lie to yourself when you're like, I never talk negatively to myself. People post every single day, like I hurt eyes are too big she's okay. Or like, Oh, I wish that this had worked out. Whatever. And like, there's so much negative self-talk. It's bananas. And people don't even realize that they're doing it, but it happens all the time. I see it. And so that keeps your joy bucket from getting filled up guys. So, um, and also it's hard to be like truly it's so excited when you're, when you don't think your work is very good. It's also hard to like get that all the way up filled. Um, and then skills again, like 90%, like I don't long way to go. Okay. But okay. My bucket's kind of, it's filled up with something. Right? It's a start, but that joy is like it, it, it's half, it's half the equation. So the things that I had to do to fill up my joy bucket to get to a hundred percent. And I do have like, this is the hardest for, I feel like caretakers and moms, are people that have like full-time careers. Um, it's really hard to like find the time. So remember we had like passion and time. So that when I was young, it was like, it became like imperative to uh, like give myself permission. I used to say like, I have to like fight tooth and nail for like my me time and have to, because I don't have any time and I'm dealing with kids all day to like fight for that time. And the reason it's worth fighting for is so you can fill up your joy bucket. Cause that is what makes you feel so good is when you're like in the throes of creation, it feels amazing. And your only way you're going to get better is if you do it more. So it's important to really work on keeping your joy bucket filled and your attitude becomes really important here too. We'll talk about that in a second. And then, so to fill up my skills bucket, you, you know, I had to take classes and I had to practice like a lot. 
So I used to go to take in-person classes wherever I could. So when my kids were little, like I would make it a prayer. I'd be like, Sean, is okay if I'm gone every Thursday night? And he'd be like, what are you doing? I'd be like, drawing. He's like, what the hell? Like, I'm exhausted. There's a family. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, please, please. I just want to do this like one thing. And he'd be like, okay, I can see how happy it makes you. You can go do it. And I actually just signed up for an in-person painting class in my hometown, which starts on Wednesday. It's all the Wednesdays in March. I'm still filling my skills bucket up. Okay. And I'm just, I, I'm so passionate about learning at all ages. And I hope to spread that passion onto you guys. So these are the two things that I personally had to do to like fill my buckets. And that's also why I put joy in the self-care category, because that is all that mental, emotional stuff. <clears throat> All right. So this, I talked, I touched on this yesterday in my live about farts. Okay. So we already know the, the normal person's route to becoming a, a, an awesome artist could be joy and skills instead of passion and talent. Okay. And so this is why this is literally the equation and the acronym for which I teach by at my art school, awesome art school. Okay. We have a huge emphasis. We have an equal emphasis on fun and attitude as we do on repetition and techniques. Being that, when you add these together, you can become an awesome artist and you have success, okay? This is why I have it printed on hoodies, okay? And this is why my we love farts in this community because this is really what we're talking about. And it's super fun because I have this on, like, I have this printed on hoodies and, you know, funny things in all places. But when you actually lay it out with the recipe like I just did, I hope it, like, really, like, brings this home. But, like, you literally, like, this is a new recipe for becoming an awesome artist that anybody can do. And we have resources in the school for um, keeping up the fun and attitude. I have like a creed that's listed in everyone's workbooks for them. I have like a five page PDF on like Bob Ross and Karen Campbell sayings to like help you like get past your fears of the blank page because there's so much negative stuff that can sneak in here. So we do have to actively like work against that negativity. That's why I do not allow any negative talk in the Facebook group. If someone makes a snide comment, you're out. Why? Because we have enough work to do here with our own self negative talk. We don't need anybody else for sure coming in with their negative talk. They're out of here. I have no patience for it. Um, but then, you know, the more fun you're having, the more likely you're going to do things again. So you, you get that repetition. And then, um, you know, I do actually now having done it for so long, I actually have invented my own techniques. So like, we're not like, I am the least stuffiest art teacher on the planet because I wasn't taught by a real artist. I have no idea. Everything I learned, I taught myself or like picked up from classes in art books. So I don't know the right words to say it, but we're like mooshing with our pencil. We're mooshing. And I'm pretty sure you know exactly what I mean. So who cares if I'm not saying the right word? But when you add up all of these, you have success. And this is a super valid way to becoming an awesome artist, which is why I know that if I can do it, you absolutely can too. Okay, boom, there we go. This is me. This was me not being an artist my whole life. This was my first attempt. And this is literally your lesson from yesterday. <laughs> okay, so I hope that's a great example of and proof for you. Now I want to talk about people other than myself because they're everywhere. Okay. And so this isn't about me. This whole presentation is actually about you guys. That was just an example. My story is just the story I know the best, but there are other stories of people in the community that are amazing and that are equally cool as mine. If maybe you don't think mine is cool, in which case that are cool on their own and has nothing to do with me. Like I said, this has nothing to do with me. Sandy Reed, she's moderator because she's the biggest cheerleader in this Facebook group. She has been a FunFab Drawing Club student since 20, uh, I think she joined in 2020. Uh, look, I mean, I can, it speaks for itself. Hello. <laughs> That's bananas. That is bananas right there. So Sandy and Sandy, forgive me if I'm wrong or correct me if I'm wrong. I believe Sandy's in her 60s. Is that right? She is starting out. You guys, this is freaking amazing. That is her, look at her hands picture. Like that is amazing. I can't even with that. And that's just from me talking about mooshing your graphite. Okay. So if Sandy can do it. Why can't you do it? You can do it. Okay. This is Bryn. We were talking about Bryn earlier. She, again, you're going to meet her. She's going to come on. She teaches now. Um, 
this is look at her face was Bryn born an artist? Sorry, no offense, Bryn. Bryn is my age. So she's 46, I think, too. I mean, that's that is a lovely drawing. I'm not coming down on her old drawing, but compared to her new drawing, that is like night and day, right? So, so crazy. Um, yes, and I see all the lovely words coming for Sandy. Sandy is the freaking best. I concur. I could not, she's like a gigantic beating love heart in the Facebook group every single day. She's huge. Yeah. And Bryn is a super wonderful too, but you can see like, this is Bryn following the recipe. She's taken every art class. And the reason Bryn, she also was a member of the fun fab drawing club and now teaches in the fun fab drawing club. You know why Bryn is such a good artist? She does all the lessons. That's why it's really not rocket science. You just follow the lessons and you get good and you do them all and you get better. This is another awesome story. This is Karina Aguiera. She actually now she was also in the fun fab drawing club. She has taken my hamburger method that I teach in the mixed media society and she teaches it in Spanish in Argentina. So she's an online teacher now as well. But she has completely taken off with the hamburger system. She's like honed it. She can't get the same supplies because she's in Argentina. So she's like d discovered the alternatives that all herself and her students can get a hold of. And that's what she teaches now. And she has an awesome, huge YouTube channel. I'm like super, she's amazing. Um, and so I'm so happy to share her story with you guys too. So, um, and look at her before face. Look, she has her guidelines in there. Her actual guideline isn't even right because the eye line should be down, should be halfway. And this one's not even halfway. And look at her gorgeous picture now. I mean, stop it right now. She's amazing. So these are so cool. All right. Christy doesn't actually know that I added these slides. <laughs> I actually didn't ask her permission, but I need to brag about her for a second too. So Christy is in the Celtic Collective, but she has been... Um, I have one of her books right now. Look at her. She has been publishing this series of a beautiful, gorgeous books of watercolor. They're absolutely stunning. So I had to brag for a minute about Christy. Also because in our Facebook group, there isn't self-promotion. So she's not allowed to put links to her books. But I'm going to tell everyone you should go check out her books on Amazon. Um, so she's using a lot of the techniques that she's learning in the Celtic Collective to publish her books, which I think is freaking amazing. And just to be clear, like the Awesome Art School are your biggest fans and cheerleaders. Okay, so we love it when people have success. <laughs> like we are, we, I live, this is like the reason I get out of bed in the morning. Okay. So like, this is amazing. So I just want to show you like, um, yeah, it's just freaking amazing and go Christy. Um, this was a vet who she just emailed me this morning. I had to throw these in here because I know a vet well. We've spoken before. She um, comes to a lot of our Zoom calls. So we have Zooms with all of our clubs. We have uh, weekly Zooms. So I've I've talked to her many times, sort of quote unquote face to face. But I know she has a very stressful job. And she's a nurse. So she does art for all the feel good reasons like I do it. Um, right. It's not about the money. She's not making anything. But look at this freaking phenomenal project. So this project is, um, is one of mine, um, for taking my fun quiz. Um, at the end of the, at the end of the, um, the week, I'll, I'll drop you the link so everyone can kind of enjoy that one. But, um, <clears throat> everyone, I don't want to like burden with you with more emails and more, uh, things to do. So I will, we'll do that as like a, an ending prize. You guys can, uh, I'll send you home with a link to that. Um, but she did it. Uh, normally I do that project on a palette and she did it on this smock. So she made herself this art smock. So this is like the best example I could think of um, where, where you're like learning for you're doing the projects just for stress relief and just to like have an awesome day and to be creative and to get rid of some of that you know, negative energy because art makes us feel so damn good inside. So whatever your reasons are for creating, whether it's to publish a book, whether it's to, you know, sell something in a gallery or something, or whether it's just to ha have an, a better day than you were having yesterday, like this is all you, all those reasons are reasons that you can do it. And I had to end with Darlene because she's a, a phenomenal artist and she she doesn't need any lessons from me, clearly. 
<laughs> every time she does a project, she doesn't, she knocks my socks off like every single time. Okay. So Darlene is, I love, love, love. First of all, she's like a dear. She's the nicest human on the planet and so supportive of everyone else. But she is the perfect example. There's a lot of people, <clears throat> I get a lot of slack from professional artists who are very hoity-toity about their skills and maybe they know that I wasn't born with skills. Who knows? But some real artists are real jerks. And, you know, they're like, I don't need art lessons. Like, I'm better than you and I'm holier than thou. And I always think of Darlene. Because I'm like, you know what? <laughs> like, just because I have lessons doesn't mean that you need something from me. It doesn't suggest that you're not a good artist. You can follow a lesson to simply have a great day. <laughs> like, Darlene does all of my lessons. She doesn't need to do a single one. She has a hundred, her skills bucket is full. Her talent bucket, she was probably born with talent for sure. She's doing them because she just enjoys it. Okay. And she puts her own spin on things. And so I always like, I get so frustrated with these people, their big attitudes, because I'm like, it's not about that. Like, I'm not about that. Like, it's, she's just, you can just be a part of the community and, you know, always put your own awesome spin on it. And we love awesome artists who are already spectacular artists as much as we love cheering on our baby beginners who are scared and who are just starting out. Okay. So we don't care where you are in your art ladder rung, which I love by the way, that the, the, just the, the metaphor of how we're all on our own rung of a ladder. And you know, like, so whatever, if you're in the top, if you're on the top of your field or the bottom rung, just starting out, like we love it because your reason for creating can be any one of these. It can be having stress relief and escape. That's my number one. Number two, it could be just because you want to be a member of the community like Darlene, who just like loves contributing and doing the lessons and being a member. And like, I, she, maybe I'm all wrong about her. Darlene, please tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, but I mean, I feel like that's why she's here, you know, like she doesn't need me, but she still hangs out with me because she likes it. And I love that. Um, you might be creating just for pure joy, right? It's just soul fulfilling for so many people. There's a lot of people who just have this like burning desire to make something from nothing with their hands. And so just having the prompts of the projects is perfect for them because it just gets them going and started or whatever. And some people don't even watch the videos and they just use the reference as the prompt or my final as the prompt. And that's amazing too. Some people like Christy and myself like to do all this art and we enjoy publishing things. I love doing art, but I love creating books out of nothing. I think that's because I'm obsessed with art books. So I love collecting them, but I also love creating them. So that's like a love that I have. Um, and maybe you're looking to make art to sell and like, that's fantastic. And that's awesome. And if you're learning uh, and becoming an awesome artist and that's your end goal, then that's something that you can do as well. But like literally my big takeaway from this whole thing is that especially for my people that might be thinking that they're too old or thinking or feeling awkward about why they're even here or they're insecure about their talents or they're intimidated by the other people's posts in the Facebook group or having any of those thoughts. I just wanted to show you using myself as an example that like if I can become an awesome artist, I really want you to like believe that you also can become an awesome artist too. Does that make sense? So, um, and then like, if anyone is new, there's so many of my current people are here right now, but if anyone is new, we just, all of us from one community, from my community to you as an individual, we would love for you to stay with us after the party is over because we just, we live for this stuff and it's, we eat, sleep and breathe. Um, this amazing community. It's just freaking awesome. So I have no idea if you got through that whole presentation or not, but that will forever be true that if I can do it, you absolutely can do too. You just have to kind of want to be here and click play on the lessons and away you go. And before you know it, you will be rocking and rolling as your own awesome artist. And maybe you're already an awesome artist just like Darlene is and you're just here to have fun. In other words, and regardless, that is so super cool too. So thank you for watching. Uh, reply back and let me know what you thought. And I can't wait to see your first piece.